So for 31, um, they want us to take the area between these curves and then set up the integral for the volume um, when we revolve it about the lines that they give us. And since they use us to, they ask us to use calculators to evaluate it, um, I used a graphing calculator to draw, to put in these, these curves, right? So we have the curve y is equal to uh, minus x squared, y is equal to 0, x is equal to negative 1, and x is equal to positive 1. Um, so we can see right now that the area between these curves is the this section, right? Um, the section in yellow. And so the first thing that they want us to do is to take this area and then revolve it about the x-axis. So in the x-axis, we're going to revolve it about this line. So if we revolve it about this line, what we're going to end up with is a bunch of disks that get bigger here and then they get smaller, right? It's gonna kind of make a volume that has the same symmetry. Um, so this is a pretty easy to set up. We're summing up these disks, right, when we revolve it. And these disks, we're summing them up horizontally. So this sum begins at x is equal to negative one and ends at x is equal to positive one. It's a horizontal sum. So it goes from um, negative 1 to positive 1, right? And this one's pretty straightforward because now we just have to think about what the area of each disk is going to be. So the area of each disk basically is going to have a radius that is the size of the height of the function. So at every point, the radius, it just touches the function, right? It's dependent upon um, the height of the function. So your radius is basically going to be just... Um, your area is going to be pi r squared, where your radius is the height of the function, and therefore the area is just pi times um, the function is e to the minus x squared squared. That's what we get for our function, right? Um, so when we calculate this, I'm just going to put the pi outside. Uh, this is e to the minus x squared times e to the minus x squared. And then when we're multiplying exponentials, we just add them. So that's pi e to the uh, minus 2x squared. And that's it. We basically just sum up these um, these disks. We sum them up from zero all the way out here, and that's going to give us the full volume. So it's the sum from minus one to positive one of pi e to the negative two x squared dx. And then it just tells us to set it up, right? And then you use your calculator to evaluate the integral um, correct to five decimal places. So if you go into your calculator or um, just Google symbol lab, uh, definite integral calculator, I really love to use that site. It's called here, I'll put symbol lab. I'll link it in the description. Um, and we just input this integral with our boundaries and the result that it gives us is approximately, let's see, 3.75825. So that's it for the first one. Now let's talk about the second scenario, right? Where they want to take us to take the same area, but now they want us to revolve about the line y is equal to negative one. So once more, um, let's color in our area of revolution. But now, instead of revolving about the x-axis, they want us to revolve about this line. This is y is equal to negative 1. So instead of just having a perfect circle, um, it's going to be a bit different now because we're going to have these washers, right? Because there's a bunch of empty space that has no volume. So when we re revolve, we're going to have a, a washer such that the smallest part of it, the smallest radius, touches the x-axis. It's going to go like this. And then the bigger part of the radius touches the curve, right? So once more, we're summing these disks uh, horizontally, right? We're summing them up from x is equal to negative 1 to positive 1. So it is, in this case, it is the same boundaries. But now we have to think, hey, how is it that we are going to calculate um, this, this ring, right? And if we think about it, um, this ring is just basically taking the bigger circle that's going to be made um, with the radius that touches this point, right? That's the biggest uh, biggest point. And then from it, we're going to subtract the smallest radius. So when we subtract, we're going to end up with this ring that is pretty much the ring that we, that we have here that we're summing up. So this is uh, A1 minus A2, right? Where A1 is the bigger, the biggest circle with R1. 
and A2 is the smallest circle with R2. So um, when we sum this up, let's see, let's get an expression. Well, first we need to get an expression for the radius. Um, so R2 is basically going to go all the way out here, and then it's going to go a length of 1, right, from here to here to length of 1, and then 1 plus the height of the function, right, which is what we were seeing. Um, same thing if I were to choose it at a different point. I need to cross this distance because this distance is a fixed one. And then from it, I add the, the height of the function, right? I add the f of x. So in this case, we can see here that our, that our radius from here all the way up to here, um, our radius is, let's see, I'm going to put this a1. That area is just pi. Uh, our radius is 1 plus the, the height of the function, right? 1 plus e to the minus x squared and then squared. Um, so we have our a1, which goes from the center to 1, and then from 1 all the way out to the function. And then a2, um, a2 is just the smallest part of the radius, right? So the smallest part of the radius, uh, the smallest part of the radius is basically just going to go from the center here all the way out to the x-axis. The x-axis is always going to be our lower boundary. Um, and thankfully, this is very simple, right? Because this distance is always going to be 1. It's always fixed. So in this case, a2 is just pi times 1 squared. No, uh, no mystery here. So let me, let me clear all of this so that I have space to do my calculations. Um, so in this case, we want, and let me just ex expand um, a1, which is equal to um, pi. So I'm going to FOIL this. So it's e to the minus 2x squared. And then let's see, plus... 2e to the negative x squared, and then plus 1. So that's what I get when I FOIL, and um, this is just basically uh, pi, right? So um, actually, I'm going to leave it this way. So when I go a1 minus a2, a1 minus a2, it will give us uh, the bigger one minus the smaller one, right? So pi outside. So I have e to the negative 2x squared plus 2e to the negative x squared, and then plus 1 minus 1. So that's going to disappear. Um, and basically, yeah, now that we have found this, we have found the area of our, of our ring, and we can now sum up this ring from negative 1 to positive 1. So this is basically pi times e to the negative 2x squared um, plus 2e to the minus x squared, and all this times dx. So um, when we plug this into our calculator, um, let me see, let me put that in. This is going to give me, um, it's approximately, let's see, 13.14, five decimal places, one, four, three, one, two. Yeah. And so that's the volume that I get when I revolve that area about the line uh, y is equal to negative one.